Hello all, welcome to oratrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about sales order imports using the FBDI. Okay, so this is a sales order UI screen where we have the header details and this align detail. Okay, now let us discuss about this information like uh, the sheet details of the FBDI. So this FBDI contains 15 sheets out of which we will be concentrating only on three sheets. Okay which has the header details, line details, as well as address details, okay? So now here, if you observe, let's start with the header data. So in the header data here, if you observe the first column as a source transaction identifier, and also other other column, third one, source trans transaction number, okay? So these details, has, these details are mandatory when you're uploading the data from the FBDI, okay? And these both can be same, but it should be unique. So I'll just consider it as XXS1 underscore 005, source transaction system. You can configure the source transaction system, and there are some set of available system in the fusion already. So you can mention any of them, or if at all, if you want to configure them explicitly, you can mention them. Next one is the buying party identifier. So here, if you observe the pink color columns, like it is having a double, uh, like what you call, it has two asterisks, two asterisks, you can mention anyone, at least one, it should be there. I mentioned both party ID as well as party name, okay? So whenever you create sales order right here, if you observe whenever you create sales order from the UI, you need to mention the business unit as well as the customer details. The customer details, nothing but in my case, in our case, it's a party name, okay? Which is available in the headset parties table, nothing but party name as well as party ID column. You can mention any of them at least. Next one is the buying party contact name. You can mention either party ID, or party contact name or first name, last name, or those set of details. Best thing is contact name or contact identifier is the best thing to mention. Now coming to the next field, which is required as a transaction code currency. Next one is a transaction date. Next one is a business unit, which we mentioned. And the other one is a legal entity. You can mention either legal entity name or legal entity, which is assigned to your BU. Either ID or name. Whenever you see identifier, it means ID. The other important flag is freezing flag, okay? So based on the requirements, you have to mention this flag value appropriately. If at all, if you're not entering any of the pricing details, make sure that you enter the value N, okay? Else, if it is Y, you need to mention the, sorry, let me repeat it. So if at all, if you mention N, it doesn't need to enter any of the costing details. If at all, if you mention Y, you have to explicitly mention them, okay? And here in this case, Y is also nothing but null. So make sure that if you leave it blank, you need to enter it, okay? Next one is, Let's see what are the remaining fields. Yeah, that's it. Now coming to the next sheet. So line details. So what do we enter generally when the line details? We know that when in the line details, we enter the item details, item UOM and the quantity, right? Now, so here there is a linkage between the header as well as line. So what is the linkage? The first linkage between header and line is the transaction identifier. Transaction identifier, source transaction system, and as well as transaction number. Okay, so as we just mentioned, all of them same, like uh, these two feel same. I'll just say OPS we mentioned already, transaction identifier, that's it. And here, this other one is a line identifier as well as transaction schedule number. So uh, we can also have the same similar values like this here. And then the schedule number as well as transaction line number. Next one is the item number, which will come from the EJP system items table. Next one is the quantity and the UOM code. Okay, either you can mention the UOM value or UOM description or UOM code. Next one, next one is the fulfillment organization of your particular item. This is the organization code. You can mention either organization ID, code, or name. The other next one. Okay, and the shipment date. So we'll just mention this one as current date. Okay and payment terms and the remaining fields you know like uh, you have better go with this particular value transact transaction or category code as order so this is nothing but your a can mention either organization code or organization id nothing but inventory organization okay partial shipment based on the requirement you need to mention the appropriate value okay unit pricing details okay and that's it Yeah, there is one more. This also will be pre-populated. Just go with the default values, which we generally get from your standard sheet. Whenever you download the this XLSM template, by default, you'll find a good amount of samples which are already populated, okay? So just observe those set of columns also once. I don't think we have any other, yeah, that's it. Now coming to the very 
error prone sheet order addresses sheet okay most of the times many of them faces issues in this particular order addresses sheet okay so let us observe from the ui what exactly the order addresses deals about see the order addresses deals about now here if you observe the header, header data so whatever you have in the bill to customer detail bill to account ship to customer ship to addresses those all details will be available in the this particular addresses sheet so you can enter the addresses details at the header level or at the line level also it depends on the requirement which we have to go with okay so now in this case whatever you see here these are the header level right so when you just go here get click on billing for the line you'll see the information at the line level also if at all if you want to populate them if you don't want to populate you can just ignore them generally whatever you see at the line level will get copied from the header automatically if you mention the information at the header level okay so now in this case let us say when you are entering some information what are the records which you mentioned if you don't mention line data it will consider that information is for the header data so in my case i am preferring only at the header level i don't want to populate them at the line level okay so now what i do so these set of columns which we have to be managing similar to the information at the header interface level now in this one for a given header you will have two records one is for the ship to address use type as well as another is the bill to use type and the set of values will be different for the ship to as well as bill to so we have to carefully identify this information okay now first of all before proceeding further just see the customer details okay now this is a customer which we want to consider for our sales order business world is our customer name this is account number and the Side number which I want to consider is a 1032. Okay. So what I have done is I have designed a query which will provide you the information. Now, here if you observe the BI query, so for the party site number 1032, I have these details. Okay. Like a party number, party name, account status, account number, cust account ID, site ID, and all these things. Okay. Now let us go one by one. Now, here if you observe, let us start with the ship to details. Okay. Now in the ship to details, here if you observe, just observe the description, it clearly mentions what to be entered for the ship to and what to be enter only for bill to kind of vice versa kind of thing if you enter something for ship to don't enter for bill to kind of thing it is clearly mentioned there clearly mentioned in the description also now in the ship to better we have to mention the party id or any party name or party number i just entered the party identifier so you can also validate with a bu a vip report so this is a party id okay now the next one is Next one is just a party site number. So for the ship to, we just need to mention party ID as well as party site number. Okay, site identifier is nothing but party site ID. Now coming to the next one for the bill to, what do you require? You just mentioned the address used up as bill to and party details you should not mention. You need to mention the customer account details. Either you can mention the customer account ID or account number you can mention. Just search here where we have this is a cust account ID. Okay for the bill to purpose. And the other important field which you require to enter is like a customer name. Next one is, you need to mention account site identifier. This is not account site ID. Just carefully observe this one, okay? This is in the HZ accounts, in the HZ cust account site use ID, this is a org identifier. So that is a, that is a different thing which you generally come across, okay? Now let me show you the query also. Yeah, so this one. Account site use account site users table in that the orange system reference that is nothing that is a value which we have to enter in our account site identifier. That's all. Okay. So these are the only just complex fields which you need to consider when you are filling up the addresses table. Remaining sheets, nothing is required. You can just simply ignore. Okay. Now let us verify again. We mentioned 005. Here also we mentioned 005. Here also we mentioned 005. So I'll just save this one. One minute before, one minute is getting published already. One minute, let me delete the existing one and then I'll just generate. Yeah, that's it. So I'll just generate, I'll say, okay. Yep, so it got generated. Now go to the system, go to the application tools. Scheduled process says. Run the import. Okay, it's not showing. So let's select. 
load interface file for import. Click on OK. Import sales order. Again, type it import sales order. Okay, select the first one. We'll discuss what a second one, but as of now, select the first one only. Import sales order. Select the data file. The nothing but the zip file which we generated just now from our XLSM file. Upload a new file. Choose the file. Now go back here. This is our zip file. Click on OK. and submit, okay? So let's observe the information now. Once the data is uploaded into the interface table, we can run the import job, okay? So this step will just load the file into UCM and from there it will read the file each CSV file and load into the interface table. And you know, like it is very easy to remember the interface table, whatever you are seeing the sheet name, right? That is nothing but your interface table, okay? And most of the times, if you just remove the INT, that becomes your base table. Not always, but most of the times. And that's it. It got loaded into the interface table. And next step is we just need to run the import job, okay? So import sales order. Now here, if you observe in the import sales order, we have two things. One is import sales order, other one is import sales order in high volume. If at all, if you are loading the data, let us say if it's just a thousand records or a finer records, you can just go with the first one. But let us say if you're loading more than thousand, let us say if it is 2000 or 3000, better select the second one. And the difference is the import sales order in high volume, this, what it will do is it will spawn the child one. Nothing but this import sales order in high volume Internally, again, it picks up the import sales order only, but it will run the n number of threads where you can mention the number of threads you want to run it, nothing but parallelly, if, if at all, if you're having 20,000 jobs to 20,000 records to be processed, you just run the high volume job and mention that mention that the number of child, child threads is 20, so that 20 import sales order progress will run parallelly one by one. So that way, you know, it will increase the performance, nothing but the processing will be done very fastly. That's the logic. Now I'll select the first one because we just select only one sales order. So better we need to go with the first one only. And now I need to select fusion order, orchestrating and planning because the source order we just mentioned in our sheet source order code, not the source order system name. So over here, but when you're running it, you have to select the source order system. So click on submit. Okay. So it will take some time based on the validation on processing. And still we can go to our BI. Let's try whether it is available or not. Okay, 004 is available, but 005 is not available yet. Let's wait for some time. Zero, zero, 005 is available, nothing but this got processed successfully. You can just refresh this one and the sub process as well as the sales order process should have been completed successfully. Else we cannot see the information, right? Now it got completed successfully as we see that. Now copy your sales order number. So the sales order number got auto-generated, okay? So now what we do, we can validate, right? So we can go to the order management from the UI and click on order management. You can click on, you can mention your order number here and click on search, that's it. Okay. 
Okay. So these are details. Of course, there could be some particular set of uh, issues it will be there. So we always need to validate what we have entered is a basic level of information. But in real time, there could be chances you don't need to mention some more remaining set of fields. That's the only thing. Okay. But what we have covered is a basic foundation level of importing sales order using FBDI. Okay. Thank you.